Am I the butthole for calling the police because the family I tutor for keep leaving me with the kid? I am an after-school tutor. Homework help and co-curricular support mostly, test prep sometimes. I am pretty adamant and clear that you cannot leave the house while I'm working with your child because I am not childcare and I cannot be made responsible if something like a medical episode happens. I also don't want there to be the appearance of impropriety. I don't need them in the room or anything, just in the house. Even still, parents occasionally try and use me as an excuse to run a child-free errand or run to the office or whatever else they do. Usually after the first warning it stops, and there's also a financial penalty. Recently I had a family where the mom evidently left during our session. This was the first time that it had happened. Eventually I needed to leave for my next appointment. I texted and called her, but no response. I was not comfortable leaving the child, 8, alone without an adult present. After 15 minutes of waiting and becoming late for the next child, I got nervous and called the police non-emergency line to ask what I should do next. They said they'd send someone over. The police arrived and said they'd wait with her. Of course, I have many angry calls and a negative review from this mother now, saying I've created a huge problem for her and the police think she's some kind of bad mother now and a social services agent asked her all kinds of questions and how dare, etc. She claims she didn't realize the session was only 30 minutes and thought it would be okay to quickly leave around the corner because I would still be there when she returned. I was comfortable with the decision at first, but she seemed genuinely shaken up by her interactions with the social agent or officer she spoke to, unclear which from her message. And a friend of mine says this was an uncalled for escalation that could have actually placed the child in more jeopardy than my leaving after the appointment, or that I should have waited for the mom to return and spoken with her first as a warning, Ida? A friend of mine says this was an uncalled for escalation that could have actually placed the child in more jeopardy than my leaving after the appointment agreed, the parent should not have escalated things by leaving you alone with the kid and being uncontactable to the point that you had to call the cops. What were you supposed to do, just leave the 8 year old on their own? For all you knew the mom had just gotten in a horrific accident and was unconscious or something. Someone needed to be contacted and if she didn't leave you an emergency contact other than herself, you had no choice. Not the butthole. That was actually what kind of crossed my mind when I called because I thought is there an address book or can I ask the child to where maybe I can find a relative or someone else who can come over to watch her, but I couldn't help but think wouldn't she want to be accessible while away from her daughter? Maybe something has happened? Definitely was concerned about this aspect. If she was okay with leaving her kid with you for a few minutes, what's to say she would be okay if something actually DID happened and you were there? What's stopping her from blaming it on you? Probably not a whole lot. This person needs to know that leaving their child alone with their tutor in a non-school environment is not okay. What you did was fine since you had made it clear, as made evident by this action happening with other families, with a financial penalty and what I'm assuming is included in your contract. Once, maybe, is fine and as long as they didn't do it on purpose, but it sounds like maybe she needed a little something more to pull her head out of her ass. You are definitely not the butthole. Exactly. I'm sure you called the police for all the right and noble reasons, but to be honest, I'd have been perfectly fine, op, if you had called the police not only because she tried to use as free, unlicensed, fully liable child care, but because you had to pay her for the privilege. She caused you to miss out on your next appointment. She effed with your meal ticket. That is not on. Any problems she incurs are solely of her own causing. Not the butthole. And to add on to this, you, as a tutor, do not want to be on the hook for any liabilities, especially if they attempt to blackmail you. Op's role is to tutor, not babysit. Yup. I've tutored in the past myself, but it was always at a center where there were other adults and we were responsible for the kids there. If I went to another person's house, I would absolutely want to know the parents were there in case something went wrong. Couldn't agree more. Original poster isn't the butthole in any situation here. After reading that comment, I'd be too afraid to look after this child again in case something does happen and the mother does try and blame original poster out of spite now. Absolutely. The parent has made their child a liability now and it's not worth it for op. I would drop that family so fast and make them pay the penalty. This definitely sounds like she was gone longer than a few minutes. It's not clear when the mum snuck out. 
In that time original poster tried to contact mum, then add on contacting the police and waiting for the officer to arrive, etc. Unless original poster wasn't clear that it was a half hour session mum would have known that they are paying for a half hour. Original poster is not the butthole and mum put them in a really horrible position and they did the exact right thing. Also did she not respond to you trying to contact her? She should have. If the police didn't think it was necessary they wouldn't have contacted child services, so that also speaks in your favor. Not necessarily true, agencies like the police tend to have strict rules on what they have to do in specific circumstances and I expect this would be technically an abandoned child. In the US, there are laws about mandatory reporters such as police, teachers, firemen, etc. that are legally required to report suspicions of abuse slash neglect. It was still absolutely the right call for original poster and they might want to check if they, too, are mandatory reporters, or the equivalent, and what that legally requires them to do. Okay, parent here. You don't accidentally forget your kid, for God's sake. They're way too loud, smelly and cute for that. The mother and anyone else criticizing you are being totally unreasonable. If it was no big deal, she would have told you she was leaving instead of sneaking out. If it was no big deal, she would have answered your calls or texts. It was a big deal because she put you in an untenable situation. You can't leave her so you fail your next appointment. You can't fail your next appointment, so you have to leave her child unattended. Anyone telling you that you did wrong, are people that do the same thing. You can bet that this is not the first time that she has taken advantage of people like this. She just always got away with it before. I agree that she's probably gotten away with this before. It's probably why the mom is so upset. Her parental failings are actually being looked at by social services. Op didn't say anything about the family's financial status, but I assume they're well off to have a tutor in their home and to not worry about the financial penalty for taking off during a tutoring session. The mom is probably also worried about her social standing with neighbors and relatives because of this increased attention to her parenting methods. Dot if it was no big deal she would have told you she was leaving instead of sneaking out. Yeah my spidey sense is going off. Especially since she didn't return texts or calls. Like, drugs or booty call kind of spidey sense. Or something that distracts a grown adult from taking a text. Especially when she is just around the corner. Massive difference between I'm going to go borrow a cup of sugar from the neighbors, contact information is on the fridge. And just effing leaving without warning. I wish I could upvote this more than once. Totally agree, the authorities have questioned her and now she has issues probably because she thinks it's okay to leave her child alone or with people who are not okay with slash don't know they are supposed to be watching the child. If she's done it to up, how many other times has she done it? Not the butthole. NTA, mom blatantly lied about not knowing the length of the appointment and knowing she wasn't supposed to go. And she wasn't tea back when it ended. Nor did she answer your calls and messages, because she knew she was being a butthole. For all you knew, as you said, she could have been in an accident, or left town, been drunk at the local bar, had a medical emergency somewhere. She left you alone with her child and refused to 1, tell you she was leaving and 2, respond to you when you figured it out. How long were supposed to wait while ignoring your other clients? And you didn't call CPS or 911, you called an authority to ask what you should do because you had no obligation to be free child care to this irresponsible woman. And yeah, I'm sure she is shaken up because she got caught being obnoxious and got in trouble for her irresponsible actions. Maybe next time she won't try to take advantage of someone. For all you know now, she was in a motel with a lover and had to come clean to her husband and that's really why she's upset. Or she was planning on accusing you of molesting her daughter, but now can't because if you had actually done that you wouldn't have called the cops. People are crazy. You did the right thing. Edit, thank you for the award. Oh all of this. Original poster may or may not even be vetted to supervise children, in my country you need a working with children check to be left alone with them. If ops country doesn't have a similar system then all the worse, you don't know who you're having around your children. The mother was incredibly irresponsible, 100%, knew what she was doing or as you said, would have answered the phone. No one leaves their kid without an express plan, return time, emergency contact. That alone should be her wake-up call. The mother could have been dead in the basement and that's why she wasn't contactable. Original poster had no choice. And calling CPS, the cops, 
isn't the worst thing you can do. They're an investigative body, if there is no problem and this was a misunderstanding then they won't proceed with any action. If there is a problem, the first step isn't always to remove the child. They can introduce programs, counseling, family therapy, etc. It's humiliating for sure, but as a parent you want the best for your kid and if that means getting a little extra help to focus your priorities and make smarter choices then the mother should be happy for the opportunity to grow. She didn't pick up her phone. She made you late for your next customer. She's the parent. She should know how long the tutoring she's paying for is. This was avoidable if she had at least picked up when you called. If she looks bad to the police then that's on her. She was upset that she got caught being a bad mother because she is a bad mother. What she did was totally inappropriate, irresponsible, and borderline abandonment. Do you have paperwork that people sign explaining the rules? Op mentions a financial penalty, so there probably is. How didn't she know how long the session was? Didn't you tell her sessions are only 30 minutes? She was gone for over 30 minutes of no longer. And it isn't even relevant anyway, because original poster didn't know she left, wasn't told, didn't know how long she'd be gone for, and didn't have a different emergency contact. What if an actual emergency occurred? Child needing to go to hospital but whoops no parent to make medical decisions. Or if original poster had an emergency instead of another tutoring session and had to leave? And the mom was gone for a minimum of 15 minutes according to op, and we don't know at what point of the session she left, 5 minutes in or 5 minutes remaining, or how much longer it took for her to come home after original poster called the cops, only says they waited 15 minutes before calling, so even if mom thought the session was an hour, longer than that may have passed before she made it home. She just figured she'd get free babysitting out of it and hoped original poster wouldn't say or do anything about it. Now she's mad because she looks bad to the neighbors and anyone her 8-year-old tells. Assuming that CPS isn't continuing to investigate her, this might not have been the first call they've received. The fact the mother didn't even tell original poster she was stepping out is crazy to me. I let my husband know if I go outside to shovel snow. Not because he cares, I do it to let him know he's on point for the kid. My husband and I would also tell each other things like that and we don't even have kids. Because accidents and emergencies can happen and if I suddenly realized I haven't seen him for the past half hour it's important for me to know if he's watching TV with his headphones on or out back cutting wood with a chainsaw. This multiplied by a million if a kid and a stranger to the family would be involved. If you can respond to the reviews then put it on there that you were left with said parent's kid unsupervised, which is against your rules, when you were supposed to be meeting with your next client and that she was unreachable after many attempts so for the child's safety you called non-emergency. If I were you op, I'd have a written contract in place from now on stating that parents cannot leave during the tutoring sessions and what the penalties are if the parents break the contract, if you didn't have one before now that is. This way if this happens again, I really hope it doesn't, you can reply back to reviews stating how they signed a contract with a list of penalties that could potentially happen if the contract is broken. Not the butthole, you did exactly what you should have, you tried to reach her, you couldn't, so you called the non-emergency police line. You handled it perfectly, the kid was safe, and hopefully mom learned a valuable lesson in not abandoning her 8-year-old child with a, somewhat, stranger. She's only mad because now police know she plays fast and loose with her kid's safety. And social services gets involved only if they find in initial investigation that there is a pattern of behavior. If this was a one-time thing, and no evidence to the contrary social services would have walked away. My guess, this is a habit, and she is in hot water. I'm not super familiar with CPS or social services, but yeah I was also surprised that they were called. If this was really a one-time bout of forgetfulness, I don't think they would have been called. This is pure speculation, but 8-year-olds are pretty articulate for little kids, and they haven't usually developed a filter yet so I wonder if the kid said something that tipped the officer off. Edit, thanks to very helpful commenters, I see that calling CPS is standard, but I still get the feeling that it was more than a we called them because we technically have to but we're not concerned situation. Police think she's some kind of bad mother. Gee, I wonder what kind of mother leaves their child with someone who has been adamant about not being left alone in a childcare position. Not the butthole. Not just that but this person, tutor, is a virtual stranger to the child, and to the parent. 
What responsible parent leaves a child with someone they met 15 minutes ago? And who just sneaks out without telling the tutor she's leaving? Not the butthole. When I tutored, I always met the kids at a nearby library. I realize with the state of things now, that may not be an option, but I never wanted to be put in a situation where a kid could be left with me like that. I did the same exact thing. I tutored in public places like libraries or coffee shops. It's just better to be visible when you're with minors. Still are you going to leave an 8-year-old alone in a public library or coffee shop if the parents dipped? I understand the reasoning behind the public place but this situation doesn't seem to benefit from it. The library is generally safe for a child. The kid can always go to the librarian if they run into trouble. As a former library employee, young children are not supposed to be left alone at the library either. A librarian's job is to assist people find books, answer reference questions, etc. not babysit kids. It was a huge struggle at my library. People would drop off their young children with no food in the morning and not come back for several hours or the whole day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.